That was a big crack. Whoa! What happens when you try to contain the expansion of ice inside a steel box? Plan is to weld several steel boxes with different wall thicknesses, fill them with water, and dunk them in negative 320 degree liquid nitrogen. I got the idea for this experiment watching Ant-Man. There's a scene where he's breaking into a safe and he fills the door with water and liquid nitrogen. It freezes, expands, and busts the door open. Now I have some thoughts on how that would have actually turned out and a way to do it for real, but that's a whole nother video. This video is about seeing if I can contain the power of ice. I also want to see how destructive it can be and observe the different failure modes of the different steel boxes. Now ice expands 9% of its original volume and you can visualize it by freezing a pop can. Later in this video I'm going to test a box with paraffin wax because when it's melted it expands 15% of its original volume. The wax test will be even more dangerous than the ice because when the box fails there could be molten wax splashing everywhere. But since this is my first time playing with liquid nitrogen I want to take a moment to have some fun. I got a bunch of squishy stuff that I think will look really cool shattering in slow-mo. I'm gonna have banana chunks all over my workshop. Before I do the real thing, I want to do a small scale test with this pop can and soup can because they're thinner metal. I've chosen these because they're mostly water. First let's try the pop can. And now we wait. I hear lots of crackling. Whoa! There he goes! Oh, dude! Check that out. This is the can that was in the nitrogen and it split down its side. This is the can that was in the freezer overnight and it swelled and didn't burst. I'm not quite sure what that says about how fast the nitrogen freezes versus in the freezer, but when this burst, there was still liquid inside. And now for the soup can. Now this is a steel can versus the aluminum pop can. Come on, you darn soup can. It might just be a problem of using broth. Yeah, I feel like if that can was full of water, it would have gone by now. Okay, that's it, I'm calling it. Did swell a little bit on the top. Sides aren't swollen. Let's see how much of it froze. I have tools for this. All right, look at that. Okay, that was super weird with this broth freezing, but not expanding, I don't know. So I happen to have another can. I'm gonna throw this in the freezer and we'll come back and revisit this later. It turns out there are 15 phases of ice. The normal ice we run into every day is called ice one. And if you can compress it at 300 megapascals or 43,000 PSI, you can keep it from expanding and create what's called ice two. That pressure needed to keep ice from expanding is insane. And I don't think I'm gonna create that with my little steel boxes and most definitely not with that soup can. Weird. Even after a night in the freezer, I got the same result. No expansion. I measured the can before and after freezing it and it didn't expand really at all. I thought maybe the ripples on the can would stretch out, but that isn't the case. Man, I am so confused. Now I need to weld the boxes up. Now the plan is to weld these steel boxes with different wall thicknesses. I've never welded something that held water before and this is kind of pivotal to the project, so we'll see how it goes. Before I go any further, let's do a leak check, make sure they hold water. How about that? This is so cool. That's two out of five. Are you kidding me? Yes! Five for five, watertight vessels. These boxes are gonna have a threaded bung welded on so I can cap them. Before you see what's about to happen, I need to share my predictions. For the thinner steel, I think it might just stretch the whole 9% similar to hydroforming. Hydroforming is when you use water pressure to form sheet metal. And technically this is hydroforming, just with a different phase of matter. Now for the thicker steel, I think it'll stretch some, but ultimately just tear open along my mediocre welds. The forces involved with ice are pretty insane. I read that back in the 1700s, people were experimenting with freezing water inside metal containers. In 1785, Major Edward Williams of the Royal Artillery in Quebec, filled an inch and a half thick iron bombshell with water, capped it with a two and a half pound iron plug, and froze it outside in the winter. He said the ice shot the plug out 400 feet. And if that's true, and knowing it takes 43,000 PSI to keep ice from expanding, there could be some serious potential energy built up in these boxes. To get an idea of what will happen, I wanted to try doing some stress analysis for the first time. And to my surprise, I figured it out. And most importantly, the simulation agreed with me, predicting that my little 
little steel boxes, even with quarter inch plate, won't be near enough to contain the might of ice. Now there is potential for this to be really dangerous, but since ice is a solid, I don't think it'll explode quite like it would if it was filled with a gas trying to expand rapidly. I am worried, however, that when the steel yields, it might release small fragments that could shoot out with some serious energy. Hence this, I call it the variable threat containment module. It's a containment box to keep shrapnel and fragments from flying off. It's made of steel plate and bulletproof glass. I'm not saying it's indestructible, but it should be sufficient for this experiment. I'll also be behind my blast shield, just like the one they had on Mythbusters. I'm doing my best to have no air inside the box. Eighteen gauge box. Oh, I'm so excited. I already hear cracking. Nitrogen is moving so much because of all the boiling. That's a lot of mass to cool down. It's gonna take a lot of nitrogen. I may have to go refill it. It is starting to swell and the steel is cracking a bunch. I'm hearing a lot of popping and cracking from the steel. The nitrogen's about halfway down now. This is all the nitrogen I have left. I see some flakes of ice in the nitrogen. I think it's probably opened up and let some ice out. About 13 minutes in. Whoa! That was something. That was a big bang. Holy cow, right on the welds, just like I was thinking. That's incredible. Look at the shape of the ice inside. I'm so excited. I've been thinking about what this failure would look like for like two months. Look at that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The ice structure is so weak. Ow, that is really cold. What a cool desk trophy these are all gonna be. That first test with this 18 gauge box took five liters of nitrogen, which is half of my doer. That's pretty wasteful. So for the rest, I'm gonna chill them in the freezer for a few hours and then dunk them in nitrogen to freeze them the rest of the way. Okay, this is eighth inch steel box. This box chilled in the freezer for 24 hours and it already put a good swell on it. I don't really think the pressure gauge is gonna register with ice, but what the heck. Oh, wow. The bottom is really swollen. I still hear a constant rate of cracking. The cracking's getting louder, it should go any minute now. It's about eight minutes in. The nitrogen's not really boiling much anymore, which tells me that the box might be close to the temperature of the nitrogen. I don't think I'm gonna be able to freeze this anymore. I think it's as much as it is, so I'm gonna pull it out. Man, that is so weird. This one swelled pretty good but it didn't crack. Now this makes me think that steel embrittlement had a factor in the first cube. I think it's possible the ones I put in the freezer froze fully solid, and the reason they didn't crack could be because they weren't exposed to the nitrogen introducing steel embrittlement, meaning the nitrogen could have made the steel weaker by making it so cold. So these are the other boxes that have been in the freezer for 24 hours. You can see that they are pretty swollen, but they didn't rupture. I'm gonna try letting them thaw out. Now that they've thawed and I've refilled them to the brim with water, I'm gonna try them in the nitrogen. This is eighth inch steel box. I already hear crackling, we're like 30 seconds in. Those sides are pretty stretched out. Okay. Doesn't look like it's cracked at all, but it's mega stretched out. I feel like it might just blow up in my face. What if I drop it? Three, two, one. This is the quarter inch steel box. Starting to hear cracking two and a half minutes in. This is the thickest one. I'm so excited to see how violently it breaks. That was a big crack. Whoa! Holy crap! What? Yeah! That's a result! That was just as violent as I had ever hoped for. Holy crap, do you see the thing jump? <laughs> Look at how little the steel moved relative to how violent the result was. 
Man, hot diggity. What a beautiful result. It splits straight down the weld. It seems like eighth inch was a Goldilocks thickness for this test. Thick enough to not tear, but thin enough to stretch. Look at how swollen this thing is. None of the other boxes swelled on the top here where the bung is. It's amazing. These results are so interesting. The thin one totally gave up. The medium one was a champ and just stretched a bunch. And the thick one put up a good fight, but failed violently. I've still got one more test to do with the box of wax. And remember, wax expands even more than ice. But before I get to that, I wanna let you know that this video is sponsored by Online Metals. They're a great resource to get metals and plastics. In fact, I've used their materials for many of my past projects, including the home run machine, the blast shield, and the coffin table. They have a fantastic website to order from along with several locations across the US. Big thank you to Online Metals for supporting this channel. As a reminder, paraffin wax expands 15% of its original volume compared to the 9% of ice. It should have a bit more energy and when the box fails, molten wax will spray everywhere and because its flash point is 390 degrees, there's a chance we might have a fire. Okay, this is paraffin wax in an eighth inch steel box on an electric burner. I'm gonna try and preheat the top of the box with a blowtorch. Eight minutes in and no swelling yet. It's starting to smoke now. There's some residual wax on top of the box and I think it's starting to burn off. 14 minutes in, it's starting to swell pretty good. It should all be melted inside by now. It looks about as swollen as the same box with ice was. You can see a bunch of wax has oozed out off the burner onto the floor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is a pinhole leak on the back right corner. I can see it bubbling on the burner. No, I think it's just the rain hitting the burner. Oh. Okay, hmm, well dang, it's on fire. Okay, so a thousand degree burner is enough of an ignition source to light wax on fire. I've never used a fire extinguisher. Well, well, that was pretty crazy. It looks like it swelled just about as much as the same size box did with ice. After looking at it closely, it looks like it might've cracked right around the weld at the bung. It wasn't as explosive a result as I was hoping, but if you wanna see more crazy experiments just like this one, you can click right here and I'll see you on the next one.